Hi everyone and welcome to the Canadian Redneck Channel. My name is Dave and this is uh, episode 2 of 9x57 Mauser Chasing the Sights. Uh, this time we're going to start with our brass prep, get it ready, get it necked up, uh, ready to accept the, the 358 caliber projectiles. I'm going to start out, we have our uh, Reading die set, I uh, cleaned it all, degreased it, ready to go to work, and I noticed something about the uh, the neck sizing ball on the uh, in the in the sizing die that I wanted to share with you a little bit of a concern I have. This is our 9 by 57 brass, and there is the sizing ball. And if you notice, it's pretty abrupt there. It does have uh, a, you know a bit of an angle at the end, but there's a, a knurled area right behind that before you get to the, the sizing ball back here. So that is a bit of a concern to me because if you notice when you put that on there it's it's a fairly abrupt change but anyway uh, we're bringing that up a whole millimeter at once um, I guess all we can do is try and see how it goes. So I will get the dies set up in the press Get the camera at an angle where you can see what's going on, and uh, we'll get to it. I have my uh, die set up ready to go in the press, and we're ready to get started reloading, uh, sizing some brass. Um, for the 223 that I've reloaded, I've used the Lee sizing lubricant, and seems to work fine for me. Um, it came with the kit, and uh, you know, I mean, I guess I'll use it up, and if I have any problems with it, I might switch to something else, but so far it's been working good. On this brass, uh, I shouldn't need too much on the outside, it's going to mainly be inside for expanding the neck, I expect, but we'll give her a try. went pretty slick. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. That worked pretty good. That was pretty easy actually. This press came equipped to prime on the press so I guess I'll get the primers and stuff hooked on there and we'll start priming as well. I already have my uh, Lee priming doodad here all loaded with primers. With auto prime or something like that they call it. So I have to run it up into the die. Oh yeah. And for priming you want your safety gogglers on. Prime case, just like that. Now, I'm lubing these one at a time as I put them in the press, which probably isn't the quickest way, but I'm not into high volume production. Uh, this is kind of more of an experiment right now than anything, so we'll see how it goes. Okay. And the bounce in my computer desk <laughs> is pointing out the necessity for me to build a stronger uh, reloading bench, obviously. But this one here will have to do for the time being. So that means I'm going to have to take that stupid priming arm off out of the road each time when I size the case and then stick it back in there after I get the neck run through. Which is going to slow things down. Well, like I said, I'm not in the high volume production. This is mainly an experiment at this point. So, you can see what I'm doing. Um, 
I don't expect you want to watch me prime all these cases tonight and size them, so I will uh, come back when I got probably 50 through and show you what they look like, and uh, we'll go from there. As you can see, we've got a tray of 50 uh, 9 by 57 Mauser brass necked and uh, primed, ready to load. So I guess we'll call that a day for this go round. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like I said, I'm open to suggestions. If you have any tips or techniques, you can leave that in the comment section below. Uh, one thing I did, you know, kind of find is a bit of a tedious process where I had to take the priming arm out each time but uh, next time where I don't have to next you know uh, expand the necks uh, I don't expect I should have to do that and things should go a lot quicker but overall I found the process quite enjoyable so like I said uh, you know any comments tips techniques you can leave that in the comment section below and as always like subscribe share have a great day